Hello everyone, it's History of Jude back here today. Today I will be presenting the Battle of Cholet, or more particularly, the First Battle of Cholet. The First Battle of Cholet was one of the first battles of the insurrection of the Vendée in France. It occurred on the 15th of March, 1793, between Vendéan forces, led by Jacques Catilino and Jean-Nicolas Stoffle, whose forces numbered around 15,000 in total, against the Republican garrison in the city of 580 men, led by Vincent Bovo Tigny. This was an interesting battle because an army of poor peasants armed with farming tools were able to take out 580 well-equipped National Guardsmen. This shows that enthusiasm and encouragement and leadership of these people was outstanding during this battle. In order to properly understand this event, we must understand the Vendeans. The war in the Vendée was a Catholic and Royalist counter-revolution or insurrection that was based in the western French department of the Vendée. The rebellion was caused by various reasons, such as the civil constitution of the clergy of 1790, and the second being the Levy en masse, which was a conscription law ordered to fully conscript, forcefully conscript 300,000 men to join revolutionary France's army at the time. The reason for these peasants revolting against the republic that abolished the feudal rights, which was suppressive to themselves, um, was likely because the region was very Catholic. And when I say very Catholic, I mean this region was very religious. During the wars of religion, almost all Protestants living in the area were deported or killed. So this made uh, the Vendée a very Catholic region, almost 100%. Uprisings would start soon after this because the the levy en masse was really what kick started the rebellion because it angered them. They did not want to fight. So riots started soon after. On the twenty third of february seventeen ninety three, the National Convention instituted the levy en masse in order to raise three hundred thousand men to fight against the coalition. Rioting occurred across the Vendée, and on the 2nd and 3rd March, peasants gathered around Cholet and refused to disperse. These peasants were already angered by uh, saw events such as the civil constitution of the clergy of 1790, which angered them because they were so religious. And also the execution of the king was more or less uh, a reason also, and the, uh, the establishment of a republic, which the Vendéans did not like. At saint florent le vieil on the 12th of March, 600 peasants routed Republican forces and took control of the town. This, this event just happened right after, uh, a couple of weeks after the start of the riots in the Vendée. And on the 13th of March, one day later, the peasants' uprising put Jacques Catalino as their leader, who is an experienced in warfare and a royalist. And together they took the town of Jalais. On the 14th of March, at Chemi, the same peasants took that took Jale earlier routed 200 National Guardsmen. Most of the Guardsmen were captured and their equipment stripped. The Vendéans also obtained three culverins, which, which culverins are essentially just older cannons. They, they weren't up to date at the time, but they would still be very important on in the siege with uh, uh, shooting cannonballs, etc. The early victories of this peasant uprising in the Vendée provoke hundreds of other rebels to mobilize, including Jean-Nicolas Stofflet, who is an experienced military leader and a royalist, still not completely loyal, was never actually completely loyal to the Republic, who joined the uprisings quite immediately. On the 16th of March, 15,000 peasants armed mostly with farming tools and some of muskets appeared close to Cholet. They attempted to negotiate the surrender of the garrison and its commander, who was Vincent Bovotigny, and his garrison of 580 National Guards. He refused because he, ex he expected that his National Guards would easily crush the attack of the peasants, who were, of course, armed with mostly scythes and other various farming tools. Only a few were armed with uh, actual muskets or rifles. Most of them they had obtained from taking other small towns and capturing Republican weaponry. The Vendeans and their leaders then decided to storm the city. 
The rebels advanced, fighting street to street and killing off National Guardsmen who were often hiding in buildings. After a few hours, the peasants cleared the city of 150 National Guardsmen dead and most of the rest captured. The leader of the garrison, Vincent Bovo Tsingyi, was also killed in the fighting. In the city, the rebels captured muskets, gunpowder, and the equipment was stripped off of soldiers and put to use by the rebels. Also, a few cannons were captured. The next day, the rebels took vehicles, which the Republicans abandoned. So these cannons that, and all the equipment that they captured in, in Cholet would be, would be put to use immediately, and it was very important for the Vendean army because now they were not completely equipped with farming tools and had some military equipment. The effects of this battle are important for this rebellion. First of all, it serves as an encouragement for other peasants to join the rebellion, and also it gave confidence to nobles, for example, François de Charette, who is a very experienced military commander and a royalist from the, the American Revolutionary War. The rebellion would go further, even accumulating into the Second Battle of Cholet, which was much larger and decisive than the first one, but that is the subject for another video. So we can see that this battle was not a, a decisive battle, especially compared to the second one that would happen, but it is actually very important because it was kind of the starting point for this entire rebellion. It was the first ba one of the first battles, of course, and the rebellion would only end really in November, October, December of the same year. Okay, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. See you next time.